All right, guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the general structure and function of the respiratory system. So before we look at specifics, I just want to talk about some general terminology that you're going to need to know as you're going through these respiratory lessons. We're going to use this terminology a lot, so I want to make sure that you understand what it is that we are talking about. So first is respiration. You can see all three of these are respiration. And anytime you hear or see the word respiration, I want you to think gas exchange. So there's three types of respiration. The first is external respiration, and that actually occurs in our lungs. So this is when our bodies are exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide between our lungs and the outside world or the exterior or external, right? That's where external comes from. So we breathe in the oxygen, we breathe out the carbon dioxide. So that exchange process occurs in the lungs. It's called external respiration. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. Now, internal respiration is the exchange of gases in the tissue. So again, it's an oxygen carbon dioxide exchange, but this time it's happening inside and we're actually putting oxygen into the tissues and we're pulling CO2 out so it can circulate back to the lungs and then, of course, do the external respiration part. And then we have cell respiration. Cell respiration still involves seeing oxygen and carbon dioxide switch, but instead what's happening is the cells are actually using the oxygen and in that process they are making CO2. So all of this is one big cycle. We bring in oxygen through our lungs from the outside world. We go, we take it to the tissues and put it into the tissues and into the cells. The cells use that oxygen and make carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is then exchanged back out of the tissues into the bloodstream, goes to the lungs and is exchanged in the lungs to go back to the outside world so we can get rid of it out of our bodies. Now, lastly, let's just define the difference between inspiration and expiration. Inspiration or inhalation is the actual process of pulling air into our lungs. So if this is our body, that's a nose, then we're pulling the air into the lungs. That is inspiration or inhalation. So we have to get the air in in order for all of the rest of these processes to happen, right? And then exhalation or expiration is the process of pushing that air back out of the lungs back out to the external environment. So we're forcing the air out so that we can get rid of that carbon dioxide so that we can do that full respiratory cycle. So basically breathing in and breathing out. Now make sure that you check out the breathing movements lesson to understand how both of these things actually happen. So now let's talk about the location of the respiratory system. Now we have both an upper respiratory tract and a lower respiratory tract. So in the head and neck, we see the upper respiratory tract. So it starts with the oral and nasal passageways, and those collect together in the pharynx, which is the throat. And then you can see those come down to where the trachea starts. So as the air comes in the nasal passages, it's humidified, it's mixed, comes into the nasopharynx here and the oropharynx here and then the laryngopharynx here. Once it hits the trachea, that actually starts the lower respiratory tract. Now you'll notice this tube back here, that is the esophagus. So there's this small piece of tissue right here that is called the epiglottis. And the epiglottis actually functions to cover the trachea while you swallow so that you don't accidentally swallow things down the wrong pipe. We've all done it before. We know how uncomfortable it is. And so if we cover the trachea with the epiglottis, then the food can go down the esophagus instead of down the trachea. So now we're going to look at the res lower respiratory tract in more detail in just a second. But what I want you to know is that the whole thoracic cavity is involved in respiration and is involved in respiratory function. So the walls of the thoracic cavity are made up of the rib cage, the intercostal muscles, and the diaphragm. Now you can see the diaphragm is this red muscle down here that's kind of a dome-shaped muscle at the base of the ribs at the base of the lungs. And that makes up the floor of the thoracic cavity. It is a skeletal muscle, which means theoretically it's voluntary, um, but it takes innervation or nerve signals from a nerve called the phrenic nerve. 
So a fun fact here, again, the skeletal muscle actually is voluntary, but the nerve signals that we get from the phrenic nerve telling us to breathe are not always voluntary. And that's actually a good thing. That's how we keep breathing when we're asleep and not thinking about it. The last thing you want is for your breathing to have to be voluntary all the time, right? So again, check out the breathing movements lesson to see more about how these muscles get involved in helping us breathe. So now let's look a little bit closer at the lower respiratory tract. We saw how the pharynx brings the air down to the trachea, right? So before it gets into the trachea, it has to go through the larynx, also known as the voice box. And the larynx is made up of the thyroid and cricoid cartilage. So the thyroid is the big one. The cricoid is just below that. And inside the larynx is where we find our vocal cords. So that's the reason why it's also called the voice box. Now, once the air passes uh, past the larynx, it enters the trachea. And all of the air passages from here down are made of smooth muscle. So again, it's that involuntary muscle. So the trachea has that smooth muscle, but it also has cartilage in rings. So if you look at it from the top down, the cartilage looks like this. They're C-shaped rings. So that means they have this little open space here at the posterior side of the trachea. And all that really does is allows for a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of movement, um, and keeps it from being so rigid that it could be uh, fragile. So we have C-shaped cartilage rings all the way down the trachea. The trachea then splits into the primary bronchi. You have one on the right and you have one on the left. So one going to the right lung, one going to the left lung. And the structure of the primary bronchi is exactly the same as the trachea. It's smooth muscle with C-shaped cartilage rings. The primary bronchi then split into secondary bronchi, which you can see here. Now on the right side, we actually have three secondary bronchi. You can't see the third one here because we have three lobes on the right side. On the left, however, we only have two. So two secondary bronchi on the left, three on the right. Then it splits into tertiary. Tertiary, there's many, many, many of them. That's these branches here that again, it just helps us to get closer and closer to the smaller tissues of our lungs. All of these bronchi have the exact same structure um, as the trachea in that they are smooth muscle and they have, um, C-shaped cartilage rings. The only difference is that these tertiary bronchi, the cartilage is present in plates instead of in rings. Again, to still give it a little bit of stability, but not be too rigid. From there, we split into many, many tiny, tiny bronchioles. And the, those bronchioles then branch into the alveolar ducts. That's where we find our alveoli in our alveolar sacs. As you can see here, the alveolar sacs are surrounded by blood vessels, and this is how and this is where gas exchange happens. So all of the gas exchange, all of the magic that the lungs do happen down in these alveoli. If the air can't get all the way down to the end of these passages, then we can't get gas exchange, okay? Now, we do have an entire lesson on gas exchange in the respiratory course, uh, but I just wanna give you a quick overview. So remember, each alveoli is surrounded by blood vessels. So the deoxygenated blood comes in and it releases the CO2 out into the alveoli so that it can be exhaled. And then the alveoli will take the oxygen and put it into the blood to circulate out to the body. So it comes into the lungs deoxygenated, goes out of the lungs oxygenated. Important things to know here about the alveoli is that there's a fluid um, on the surface of the alveoli called surfactant. And the purpose of surfactant is to help keep the alveoli open so it helps keep them from collapsing. And then inside of the alveoli, we also have macrophages. Macrophages are a type of white blood cell that help to kill any foreign particles or any bacteria that are coming in in the air, just a way to help protect us. So again, check out the gas exchange and alveoli lessons in the respiratory course to learn more details about this. So let's recap. Make sure that you know the terminology, external versus internal versus cellular respiration. They all involve exchange of CO2 and oxygen in some form or fashion, just in different locations. And of course, remember, inspiration is the process of breathing in and expiration is the process of breathing out. 
Now we find the respiratory system in the head, neck, and the thoracic cavity. The air flows from the upper respiratory tract, which is the oral and nasal passages plus the pharynx, down to the lower respiratory tract, the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and then to the alveoli. This is where your gas exchange occurs. That gas exchange in the lungs, remember, is our external respiration. And remember the alveoli are held open with surfactant and also have macrophages in there to try to protect us from foreign particles in the air. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.